like to welcome you to Best in Fest, and I'm Leslie LaPage, the director of the La Femme International Film Festival, and this is a podcast for people who are interested in advancing their career in TV and film, and learning the dirty little secrets of Hollywood. Today, I am so excited to have us a remarkable filmmaker who is coming from us from Belgrade in the middle of the night to do this. Her name is Ivana Todorovic, and uh, she's an alum of the La Femme International Film Festival. She is a director of short, socially engaging films, mostly short films that have shown at hundreds of film festivals around the world. Her uh, fiction film, When I'm at Home, won the Best Narrative Short uh, for the LA Women's Independent Film Festival. It has uh, premiered and shown in more festivals than I can name off in our time frame. Her other films, her documentarian uh, work is When I Was a Boy, I Was a Girl, uh, A Harlem Mother, everyday life for Roma children in Block 71, and they've all screened at more than 150 international film festivals. So she really understands how to work the film festival circuit. But I'd like to welcome Ivana. (laughs) Welcome. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. It's great to be here, (laughs) even in online space. Even in the online space. Um, (laughs) We've got, you know, many different uh, filmmakers that are listening in in different levels uh, of their filmmaking career. You've made a consistent, really uh, well uh, body of work, a really consistent professional body of work that has successfully navigated you through you know, multiple film festivals worldwide for each one of those. Um, how did you get into this in the first place? What drew you to, to, to really focusing in on this socially engaging uh, type of narrative as well as documentary work? Well, I'm very interested in social engaging work because uh, I, I come from a turbulent country uh, like I was born in one country and then my country changed the borders four times. And I think it's in my nature that I can uh, empathically connect with the people who need to give the voice. And um, I was lucky in life to discover documentary film through one film festival and I realized, oh, this is really good way to put other people in each other's shoes. And as I was studying social anthropology, somehow it was natural to me to search for the people whose stories I would tell in my own community. And that was the first time that I paid attention more to the gypsy children who were begging on the streets. They took me home, I had the camera with me, and that's when my love for documentary film started. And um, even now, 15 years after, I'm still in love with this film magic that connects uh, people in documentary form, but even though in the short fiction, it's, it's the same, same film magic, actually. Um, and what I liked uh, is that you have opportunity to tell the story, you have opportunity to connect with the people. And then I was lucky that uh, from the first film I, I made, uh, I saw that film can make better life for the people about whom I was making film. It didn't change their life, but it made them better. And um, I liked this a lot. Uh, So during my career, I just tried to learn more about filmmaking. Um, I was uh, at um, French uh, short uh, documentary film school made by Jean Rouge in Belgrade, like for a month and a half, where I learned when you hold the camera, if you don't feel by your heart, you need to Put the camera down so it was really good for me when i go into people's life that i know what i feel and what stories i need um, to say and uh, i was also uh, in new york at the documentary media studies where i also made a film and it was good for me to advance and recently i done master studies in belgrade for the fiction film because i wanted to learn more about uh, fiction And I was also lucky that um, when I was making my first film, a friend who was editing the film, because at that point, I didn't know much about documentary film and the world of documentary filmmakers. He told me we should send this film to the festivals because I made it to help to to do BA in social anthropology and to help this community by giving film to NGOs. 
And then we started to send it to the festivals. We went online to see what festivals. And then I started to travel the world uh, and to win awards and to meet the filmmaking community and to fall even more in love what the film can do and how we can tell the stories of the filmmaking. And that you're talking about um, was the everyday life of Roma children in Block 71. That was your first yes. one. Yeah. Which was kind of your first jump into this social awareness. From, yeah, from there you went into your next film. Can you talk to us about now you've had this one successful short, right? And you, you jump into the next to the next one. Now, how did you go about getting financing on this? Was it self-financed at that point still, or were you able to tap into some incentives, uh, government incentives that would allow you to kind of continue on this path? Yes. Um, first film, I done it with my, I mean, I didn't even know that I will do festival film. Uh, so I done it with my own money. Uh, sec for the second film, I also started to work with my own money because after first film, with what is very good about filmmaking community because you connect on the festivals and then people who wanted to come and work in Serbia, they would call me to be their fixer or to uh, help them with the shooting the film. So this is how I started to get some money from filmmaking that provided me to start a new film. And in that time, there was the problem with the homeless children in Belgrade. There was lots of them and they didn't have a drop-in center where to go to eat. And I realized, okay, this is my next project. I want to find some um, mature enough homeless young person whose story I can say. And then on the road of making this film, I heard that we have in Serbia a film center who gives the money when you apply to the film. So we applied, we got the money and that was amazing because then this boy, young man about whom I made the film, he got the money that he could leave, you know, like, then I realized, oh, this is nice that you can have money to make a film. So for my uh, third film, I started to apply uh, regularly to the film center Serbia. It's not a lot of money for the people living outside of Serbia. Everybody's shocked how you can make money, films with so little money. But here, yes, everything is cheaper and uh, I'm finding a ways, how to say, to make my life very humble so that all my money goes in my films. And so far I've succeeded because I also teach a documentary film. So I get a little bit from the films, a little bit from teaching for my life. And then I uh, have a crew of a people and friends and we help each other to make films. That's, that's a great, it's a great community that you have out there that you can access. Not everyone, you know, in the different countries have that ability. So that's, that's a wonderful benefit. So now you're into your third film, right? Or fourth film. Okay. And so now you're kind of getting used to, to navigating this femme festival circuit. How's your, what, what's your approach now that you've learned first when you started off and you didn't know how to work the festival circuit to, to now, like what is your before and after learning curve that you can share with us? Well, I think as a, independent filmmaker, meaning that I do all of this by myself, so I don't have producers, distributors and so on. I think it's very important that we need to push our films out there, uh, meaning uh, you need to send your film, as much, your film to as much uh, festivals. I usually, first year, I send to the 5A biggest film festival because it's like very important to me to try. And I was lucky with the film when I was a boy, I was a girl, that it had a premiere at Berlinale Shorts. And I also like just wrote to the festival and they said, super, send us. At that moment, even the festival fee was 50 euros, which I really didn't have. It, it was lots of money for me. And they said, no problem, send us. And they liked the film, so film had a premiere. So I think it's very important for every filmmaker to be honest, because our life, it's not easy, so we, we need to give it a try, of course. And there is lots of f festivals who, who helps filmmaker and see their films, and if they like it, they can have a premiere, right? And then when the film has a premiere on the bigger festivals, there are lots of um, festivals calls the film. And that's one way, and that's usually the best way. And also you as a filmmaker get fees for this. 
and sometimes you can even live one year from this festival uh, fees. Um, so, and other way is that you go and send your film to festivals. Sometimes like you go for my last fiction film because I don't know much life uh, of the f fiction uh, festivals, yes. So I was also lucky that uh, we had the international pe festival a premiere on uh, Brooklyn Film Festival and then lots of festivals in US called the film, which was great because film then won awards on those festivals. And when the film wins awards, then again, festivals calls you uh, more. But I'm very persistent in sending my films. Uh, and what I realize in my career, some films are more successful, some are not successful. And I think it's very important that every filmmaker has the courage not to give up. Because sometimes it's strange, like your film is successful one year on some festivals, second film those same festivals doesn't like. And at the beginning for me it was like, why don't you like this one? <laughs> Which is actually okay, yes. So. I think especially for the uh, filmmakers of the short films, it's very important to stay persistent because there are distributors out there too, but the uh, field of short film is very competitive because a short film doesn't earn money. It's totally different than the feature long. So that's why usually it's a job of a filmmakers to continue sending film to the festivals. Right. There are some distributors out there that, that take on short films and they will uh, compile them, sell them onto airlines or onto uh, channels in different countries in the world. But it's not really a money maker, meaning, you, you know, the, the short the short filmmaker isn't getting a whole bunch of money for this, whereas a long form, the long form narrate narrators and, and documentarians, they are. So learning that well, you could do very well with one, submit that second one to the same festivals, and then they don't select it. Have you looked at utilizing your shorts to raise money for a long form version of your concepts? No, because I usually, when I feel something, I have a need to say it in that moment. And then for me, that's done. I'm ready to continue uh, to the next one. And so far, I didn't have, like, um, I, I made short films because that's how much I have to say. And uh, I started, to, uh, as much films I was making, I fell really in love with this form because you need to be really perfectionist in every frame, in every second. And that suits my energy. So every two years, I make, usually I make films for two years. Now we are finishing film that is 17 minutes long. And I was just talking yesterday with one of my friends who is finishing, uh, she's a uh, Maya Muma, she's a uh, editor of the film about uh, Barack Obama for Age Gone. She's like, in two years, I'm editing film for of three hours. I'm like, in two years, I'm editing film of si 17 minutes. So that's 17 minutes. <laughs> really funny. I mean, not just editing, shooting and editing and everything, but you know, it's 16 minutes, 17 minutes. So. I love this form, so that's why I say what I have to say and then I feel I'm done with something and I move on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess in life some longer story will come to me, but let's see, <laughs> even if it doesn't come, so I'm okay. <laughs> Well, that's okay. Uh, you know, you can continue on this, you know, this path of, of telling these I engaging short docs, right? So where do you think you are now focusing? You're finishing up this one currently, right? That's, that's, ha have you been bit by the bug for your next one? Or can you tell us a little bit about the one you're, you're finishing up? Yes. Uh, we are finishing now the film uh, that this one, um, uh, it's very sad, but it's full of love film about connection between a man and a horse in only horses island on the Balkan that we uh, have. So it's very mm. poetic uh, film. It's very, how to say, uh, I mean, I just watched it before we, 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 we are having this talk now because we just added the music and somehow now it's really like, oh, it really uh, touched your heart. Uh, yes, and then after we finish this in two weeks, uh, then for the summer we have short break and then we are uh, editing mm -hmm. the film about fragility of the female's body that we shot uh, in a hospital where the woman cooperation of gynecological uh, procedures. So it will be one haiku ode uh, to female uh, fragility. And uh, then we are working on one short uh, fiction film 
that's a story about a little girl who is uh, in the middle of the night woken up by her mother and they are going in the shady parts of the city to search uh, for their fathers in uh, old tavernas. So that's my ah, next, yes, short fiction. It's again like the, nice yes, <laughs> like addiction through the children's uh, eyes. So since you teach docu documentarian uh, work and how to do this, what is your approach in tackling a subject? Well, I first of all, I believe that we all connect because there is somebody who wants to tell a story and there is somebody who can help this story to be told and we meet in the same time. So, uh, so far with the subjects I worked with, we usually want the same thing. We want this story to go out. And for me, it's very important to create the safe space for the people to open their heart because I also think if somebody want to get me to give it my own heart, like I need also time and I need this like safe space. So I always, always give a time for this relationship to grow. And then when there is a trust, I usually um, talk about my subject when we should do this giving a heart to the camera. Is that the story that needs to be told? Is there some interview that I need this person to be ready to set? So, for example, for the film that I was making in New York about a mother whose son was killed there on the street and then she made the organization to fight youth gun violence, uh, I knew that she will be most... That was the, Har that Harlem, was the Harlem one. Yes. That was Harlem mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, in that point, when I met Jean, uh, she already was somebody who was outspoken on the streets about that of her son and she was talking and giving the lecture. So that she was somebody who was used to, to talk about this. And the, for the film, right, we need raw emotion. We don't need the story as itself. And uh, I was talking with her, at the, I mean, during the protest when she feels her son the most. And then she said for her birthday. So I was waiting and that was like eight, that was seventh month since we started to shoot the film. I was waiting for this interview because I knew that's the day when she needs to give us her feelings. And that was really that. So I think this creating, you know, relationship at safe space, this is when you, as a filmmaker, can get the raw emotion that you want audience to feel, actually. So you're starting off, just to kind of recap, you're starting off interviewing them, really finding out how they want to tell their yes. story and then incorporating that into how you're going to work it into your 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 doc that you're creating about yes. them so, yeah and then you're going off and starting to take that footage uh whether it's an interview or additional footage how are you looking at that additional footage are you only bringing that in after you've done your series of interviews or what's your what's your logic uh steps that you do well, I usually, uh, when I start to make a f film about somebody, I usually see what is my uh, emotion about, what is like like the core. And then sometimes it's uh, interviews and sometimes there are real situations that I need to catch, which means I need to be there and see this and uh, record. And as I said, uh, I learned early on, if I don't feel, I don't shoot. So when I was the shooter of my uh, films, Usually I would know what I feel and then I would already know what is that material, what do we have, what do we need uh, more. And when I was put working with the DPs, uh, for example, then I would write down what was the strongest uh, to me. So even before we would put things in the screen, I would know like uh, from what I felt, what was uh, the strongest. And I never work with a lot of material because that's why I think, especially when you do documentary films, you can shoot, you can lose, lose yourself how much you can shoot. And that's why I think this rule of feeling, you know, whether you are behind the camera or you're watching the monitor, like if you don't feel there is nothing. And sometimes there is really nothing to shoot. Sometimes they are like two days of nothing. And you need to respect this if you want to get the core feelings. Well, that's, that's a problem I think all documentarians have is, you know, are they getting that emotion on film and are they capturing what they feel that story is mm -hmm. all about? 
So when you have now captured all your footage, are, um, how are you working with the editor or are you self-editing these? And it, how, what's that process for you when you're putting this footage together? And do you go off and capture additional footage if you find you're missing something? Well, for me, uh, editors are film guides. Like, and I really uh, trust them a lot because I uh, don't have the distance and they have this special kind of uh, distance that the film needs. And then we are working uh, together. And then when we see that we miss something in the film, then I go and uh, shoot. And for example, uh, when we were doing the film about uh, when I was a girl, when I was a boy, I was a girl, about Gota, who is a transvestite, we realized that we need the ending of the film. And it was that, that's for me why it's important that, that when I shoot the uh, documentary films, that I work with the characters in storytelling, because I'm telling truth about their, their life. So then I was talking with Gota, we need the ending. You know, where are you now with your life and how we can create this moment that we can shoot it as documentary scene. And then she helped me, you know, make set this and we shoot it. And then um, we always, you know, when we talk with the audience in the festivals, because I mean, this film is old now. So it was before, before the Corona when the films were traveling and you could talk with the audience and hear the audience opinion. Like nobody even realized you know, that was not the same moment when the film was shot and we shot, let's say two months or three months after the film was en ended and to lots of people this looked totally natural so that was great for me how you can direct also in documentary films in a like in a, in a fiction way but with your characters because they sometimes they need to help you to make the films about their life they need to create something also for you when you're close enough well speaking about that film it's a really interesting film how did you find uh uh the transgender uh person to do the yes. documentary about did, how was this how did you discover well the thing was that after um after new york i came back to belgrade and it was gay pride here and lots of people got uh, beaten and for me after living a few years in the states i totally forgot like that yes in balkan people still care who is what sexuality and they care in a very violent way unfortunately and that was really scary for me because I, I just came maybe one week after, so it was still fresh what happened. And then uh, one girl called me and said, uh, she works for the NGO, and she told me there uh, one transvestite and three cross, dresser, cross dressers came together and they want to make theater performance and tell this, their stories. And uh, I was like, wow, that's very brave of them. And she said, do you want to come? Because I have my own, I had my own equipment because at that time I was still shooting my films by myself. Do you want to help us just to record their rehearsals? And I said, of course, and I came. And uh, Gotza, the transvestite, when we met, I asked her, why are you doing this? This is very brave act to come up publicly in this violent society towards you now. And she said, I want to tell my story so I can be, I can live, I can become, uh, I can be visible so I can live invisible like everybody else. And I was like, wow, this is such a philosopher of life. And I said, I will help you and I will tell your story. And then I really need like first six months to get to know with her life because life in that time of uh, trying best at here was really scary to me. Like. They needed to walk as a man during the day so that nobody beats them up. In the night, they would live their own reality. And that was really scary. And um, so after six months, I understood her life. And we got drunk one night together. And she told me the night, do you understand? Can you tell my story? And I said, yes, I can. And it really somehow from that moment on, oof, magic happens. And it was really beautiful to tell her story. And I was really happy that uh, we got a premiere at Berlinale. So she traveled for the first time in her life outside of the Serbia to Berlin, where she was totally invisible because she was, you know, as everybody else. And it was, she was free. She was woman all the time. And we came back to Belgrade and she came up to media. She was the first time I I don't know, 60s or 70s here to tell her story, you know, and it was amazing. She opened up that year the Pride in Belgrade. She traveled to Sarajevo to please, you know, to these uh, traditional communities. 
And, you know, like for me as a filmmaker at that point, like I'm already used to it. I don't want it to sound superficial, but I'm used to it, to festivals, to, you know, great cinemas and audience and everything. But to see the line of, you know, LGBTQ population, young population, traditional, you know, country, oh, that was amazing to me. And we had, you know, like when she comes on the stage, this ovation of the full cinema and doing Q&A, that was really special because that was the first time for me to travel with, with the character also and to see what kind of change uh, that can be, you know, like... Right, the before, the before and after, the expression of what's happened after, you know, she has taken on this, you know, uh, role, this persona that is more freeing than the one that she has to live under in her own community. So just to recap, did you, you followed her with or without the camera for that six months, for those first six months, getting to know her life? Were you... I had a camera. Mm -hmm. I always have a camera. Camera was part of, of me. That's why one way back goes like this, because, you know, I would carry this equipment and so on all the time. But I didn't always shoot. I always had a camera, but I didn't always shoot. Sometimes simply I... Uh, wanted to be fly on the wall because for me to tell somebody's story, I really need long time to understand, to feel on my own skin. So that, and also for me to see what is the story there, what elements is the story there, and that's the same thing I do in the fiction now, which I think it's really great coming uh, from documentary film to the fiction because you need to prepare the in different way, but in the same way when you come to shoot this, you push. The actresses, uh, recently the main actress from the uh, short fiction I done, uh, she from so, when yeah the, you're you're talking you're talking about the narrative when I when was I when I'm at home yes which was yeah which was your first leap into taking from that documentarian and then moving into the narrative yes and she just got the award for the best actress at the social relevant film festival uh, in New York and then. Yes, and we talked about this after, and she said, you have no idea how much you pushed me, like, to give you this raw feeling. And I was like, well, and I asked, how did you feel? She said, good, because I trusted you, and this is good for us as actors to know what you as director want. And I really think this just comes because, in reality, people give me this raw feeling, and I know what I search for. And again, learning to feel what you see, all connects in one because you just uh, you can change different kinds of genres in film but with the same way how to tell the story to give this raw emotion okay so you're working with actors now but but what are your what are your main differences that was difficult or challenging for you coming from that and going into that narrative storytelling world well to be honest i had no challenges for me working in a narrative was pure pleasure because everybody, like it was 30 people helping me to tell this story. Everybody was doing, I'm used to it to do everything. Even when I work in documentary with a crew, like we all help each other. And here everything was telling me, no, 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 you do nothing. You work with the actors. I got the monitor. So for me, it was amazing. I did, like I was making this uh, short fiction film for five years because I needed a long time to come uh, to the story. And so that was maybe, now when you ask me about the challenge, it was the uh, coming to this story was a challenge because I came back uh, from New York here to tell the story about sexual abuse in the family. But because what I love by living in New York, I like how women are open to talk about the trauma. And here everybody's ashamed to talk about the trauma. And uh, that's why I realized, okay, I, my mission as a filmmaker is to help our society. So I must uh, talk about the things that are not to talk about. And for me as a woman, sexual abuse is the, and raping is the two worst things almost that can happen to a woman. So I came back to tell this story and I thought I would take a documentary film. But then when I started to dig deep, I realized if I make documentary film, this is too, too hard story for the viewers. Like it's too much to comprehend. And then I said, then I needed time to say, okay, there, and I read a lot. I talked with the victims. I talked with the people in institutions. So I watched a lot of film and I realized, oh, fiction film can make this story better. I should just try to search for universal feeling of facing the worst traumas. So that's something that we all can adjust 
identify with because everybody has black traumas one way or the, on another and um, yes so that's why I enrolled the master studies because I thought okay let me learn how can I say the story the best and let me have uh, people I can work with for not lots of money because I don't know will like Film Center Serbia give me as a documentary documentarian money to make fiction so we made short fiction film on 200 2000 euros like nothing oh my gosh yes and <laughs> and this film also was shown on so many film festivals we got just this year already five international awards last year i think we got seven international awards and like everybody can believe it but because this magic of the film was good like i was working with young people who wanted to tell these stories i was working with the professional actors who wanted to be part of this story and I, that's what I think it's good um, te to tell socially relevant films because everybody come to help these stories to be told because they believe it's important to be said and what is beautiful now for this film is that uh, now in Serbia Me Too movements started and now these awards that we are getting, yes, they're more important. And then we talk in the media and me as a director and main actors as a main actors. And we talk about the team. So we helped even more social revolution. So that's great. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. In, 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 I think the United States, there's, they're, they're a little jaded, right? Cause we've been, we've been on that uh, movement of yes. me too for a while. Right. So to have this kind of fresh in your own country and having women speak out, I can see how this aligns just perfectly within what's happening in your own country. So what advice would you give to a young documentarian or a young filmmaker starting in your country or a different country? What advice would you give to them? To follow their heart and tell their stories. I think that's most important thing, to be brave, no compromising, persistent. Because uh, there, there is no, how to say, there, there is nothing in between you and film to be made. Especially for the young people, especially with this equipment. Like, I'm totally amazed today, what can you do? I mean, there, like, you, there is no excuse, <laughs> really. And uh, there is no excuse for film not to be made. And there is no excuse also not to take this film to the world because there is so many ways and so many festivals and online platforms and everything. And uh, what this pandemic, I think that, I mean, there is nothing good about this pandemic, of course, but I think uh, somehow what happened uh, with the film and the people, I feel that because people had a little bit more time in home now to connect more with the films and I saw that for example even in, in my country now for the last one year so many people so watch more films online than ever like I think I had lots of during the, the years with my films I had lots of audience in the festivals but never so much online and last year so many people watched so I think that's very good, like this connection between the audience and the films in different kinds of ways, even at home is uh, stronger than ever. And that's for us, even for the, as for the film, filmmakers of the short film, that's even better because there is much more audience outside to connect with the stories we want to tell and open up the dialogue about it. Yeah, definitely. Since the COVID, people have flipped to, you know, online viewing, but... The real question is now that the the world is open in online viewing, will it stay stay there? Have people now explored and discovered there's this whole independent, you know, realm of filmmaking that they can get access to? So that's a good point that you made. Um, our last question is, what is a dirty little secret that you wish somebody had told you? <laughs> <laughs> that would have made your life easier or better uh, when you started off on this venture of filmmaking. Well, what filmmaker told me, and that's, but I was lucky to hear this, and he told me, you know, like, uh, there is nothing better than the film. When the film takes you, you will be never be able to leave it. And he was right. Like, I, it's not a matter of um, my choice anymore. That's my air. Like, I will always make a films. And he told me this and I'm happy that he told me because 
of course, I had the moments in my life when I was questioning myself because life of every filmmaker is also a very hard life and you need to learn to be humble. And this is also advice I got early on. They told me, if you are into money, don't go into films. Like you need to know that you will need to appreciate that you're a filmmaker and sometimes that's something you need to wake up in the morning with because there will be so many how to say differences in your life and life of other people and sometimes to other people your life have, will have no sense you know like what are you doing making films for what for whom okay awards festivals but you know money wise your life doesn't change uh, much like so I can even look now at the beginning of my career, maybe I even had much more money with my, like, with my work than I had it now and how much my films bring me. But I think it's important. I got these advices from the beginning that I know that I need to be just happy that I can tell my stories and that my stories can travel and that I can be appreciated by my colleagues because that really uh, means to us, you know, sometimes more than a bread, <laughs> sometimes the, more than a daily bread. Um, so I don't have nothing. I mean, I think I was just lucky that I got all these um, things early on and I know what will my road be. And uh, that's why I never took any compromise about anything regarding my films and my career. I always followed my way. I, and one thing that Virginia Woolf said also, I read this early on, she was right when she said woman needs a, a room so she can write fiction, paid room. So that's something that everybody needs to see in a long run, like how they can, you know, never stay on the street, they never stay hungry. That's very important because I had some jokes that some filmmakers told me you're too poor to make films. I was like, no, 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 I was lucky because I had my own flat, you know, early on kind of, and that helped me never to be on the street and never be hungry and I can make films. So I think it's very good to find the, you know, think like what is the way that you always know you can count on that you can still make your own right. Excellent. <laughs> That's amazing. I want to thank you for coming on Best in Fest. And uh, for all those that want to submit their film to the film festival, they can um, go to Film Freeway, search on Lafemme International Film Festival and find us there. They can go on lafemme.org. Uh, they can also find the video component of this on our Lafemme International Film Festival uh, YouTube channel. Don't forget to like us on Instagram and give us a thumbs up on the podcast uh, platforms that we are on. So thank you again, my guest, Ivana Todorovic, uh, coming from Belgrade at a very early morning. Uh, and if you have any social media handles you want to shout out uh, to Ivana, what are your social media handles? Uh, www.ivanatodorovic.com and Facebook also, Ivana Todorovic. I'm always... Uh, in a good mood to connect and to share experience with other filmmakers because we are in the same community. We are in the same community. Thank you so much. Best and fast. Mm -hmm.